we continue our study on Matthew's Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 and verse 12. After they were taken to Babylon, Jehoiakim was the father of Shetile, Shetile was the grandfather of Zerubbabel. Biblical history is easily distorted. Now, I'm not saying that it is done purposefully. The two great eras of biblical history are the Exodus, which of course is followed by the journey through the wilderness. And then there is the period of the United Monarchy, the rule of Saul, David, and Solomon. The problem in a way is that much of what we think of important history of ancient Israel happens early. It kind of reminds me in a way of how some movies operate. You watch the first 10 or 15 minutes and they're just absolutely frenetic in terms of action happening in events. Then the rest of the movie for an hour and an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, seems rather slow and plodding as the rest of the story unfolds in light of that lot of action. You see, that's kind of the way I see Old Testament history, and that is not quite accurate. The problem, of course, is that the Exodus and the United Monarchy, while important, are not all important. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying that these events are unimportant. What I getting at is that they are not of supreme importance. You see, both of the events were critical for the unfolding of the purposes of God in the Old Testament and for the people of Israel. The problem was that these events did not automatically make the people the people they should be. You see, like the movie that starts with a bang, that story the story that follows is important to make sense of what we have seen. In the case of Israel, it did not work out well. You see, it was far easier for people to look back at what God had done than it was to go forward and live in light of what that meant. Yes, God created the basis for what these people could be, but the people had to embrace what that was. The exile was of tremendous importance for the development of the idea of what it meant to be the people of God. The exile refers, of course, to the events that unfold after Babylon conquers the city of Jerusalem in 587 BC. The people of God were not the people of God because of the historical inheritance that was theirs. Yes, the exodus was great and the reign of Solomon was wonderful. What the people failed to see is that to be people of God, to be a people of God, one had to live in submission and surrender to God. It was not enough to lay claim to the historical heritage. Read the Gospels and the book of Acts in the New Testament and you realize that the message of the exile was never really ever internalized. The exile, in some ways, is the most important event in Israel's history. It is a testimonial to the fact that it is never just enough to take from God the blessings he gives. They must, they always come with a set of obligations. Look at the church, historically or locally. Can we find great moments in the past? Do we have stories or events that powerfully shape the church today? Maybe the church you are now in is in a period of one of those great happenings. Let us remember that God is always at work to move his kingdom forward. It can be an exile or an exodus. It can be through times of great joy or great pain. In the time of the exile, we have the emergence of what we call Judaism. People of the Old Testament faith born and raised outside the promised land. Now, some of these would be witnesses to the pagan world, the biblical faith. You see, God used the exile to bring the faith to those of no faith. The dark moments in the life of the church may be the time 
when God is preparing for a great harvest.